Can you go over how you go about doing keyword research when tackling a new site or niche? Um, yeah, what I can do is I can point you to a resource, Randy, that is going to give you pretty in-depth training as to what it is that I do for when I'm uh, doing keyword research. Um, and let me actually, here, I'll pull up the link, and then I'm just going to drop it on the page. It's Guys, this is a free, um, let's see, just a second. Word. I set this as a, up as a funnel a while back. Um, last year, actually, I set this up as a funnel when I was testing when I first started testing some affiliate funnel stuff, and this was uh, the first one that I set up. And I'll, I'm running traffic to it with uh, YouTube ads, and that's it. And but there's a um, so just opt in, guys. You'll be put on my list for this, but I don't do much mailing off of this or anything. So. Um, but anyways, go go here, and uh, it's keyword suggest.co. I'm going to drop the link on the page here in just a moment. But you can go here and uh, opt in, and then it'll send you the to the actual training site where I've got, I don't know, I think, I can't remember. It's been a while since I actually even looked at the training site, but it's got like six or eight, maybe even ten videos on there about how I go through um, keyword research. Of course, some of them are a little bit dated, but it, it won't matter because it's the same exact process that I use now. I haven't changed my keyword research process in the last, I don't know, three years, other than the addition of using PowerSuggest Pro, which is my favorite keyword research tool of all time. Um, and that I actually have uh, a couple videos on this training site about how to use PowerSuggest Pro, as well as another one that I use um, called um, RankSpy. So those are the two additional keyword tools that I use, but everything you can do, uh, you, you can do it without using either one of those paid tools, and I teach you how to do that in this. So let me just drop this link on the page, and um, there's no sense in me going through that right here when you guys all have access to keyword research training here. So just one moment. While you're doing that, let, let me just, uh, a word of warning, if, if you have white hat sensibilities, you can still attend my webinar, although I will be going thoroughly and deeply into manipulation and, and all kinds of stuff that you can do. To so you might offend with some people. Is that what you're saying? You know, some people with with white hat, so-called white hat sensibilities, might be offended by the stuff I have to say. But what I have to say to that is, go to the webinar, listen to what I have to say, so that you know what you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Come listen to what I, I'm going to teach you, so you know not to do it. <laughs> right. What's bad about it? Everyone about else can go. Everyone else can go rank and make money. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brandy, just to follow up on this, just to give you guys, a, a, just for the benefit of everybody that is here, um, for keyword research, I, I, I'll tell you, the, the pretty much the the three things that I'll do when I'm um. And in this order is I always go to Google Trends first. That's where I always start with uh, keyword research, guys, is Google Trends. And then I identify, because I, that way I can sort by, uh, you know, I can filter by uh, location. I can go all the way down to a city level if I want or back it out, uh, you know, level by level if I need to to get more data. So, for example, I can go from city level to a region level, a regional level, from regional to state, from state to national from national to, uh, uh, you know, which would be a country uh, um, targeting, and then I can go worldwide if I wanted. Um, so I usually always start with Google Trends. I put my seed terms in. I identify from the related keyword phrases at the bottom. There, It'll show you, if you scroll down to the bottom of the Trends uh, screen, once you search for a, a keyword, um, you know, set your filters, which is what I always do. You know, I do everything. All I do is U.S.-based stuff, so I always start at either U.S. or, or drill it down into, you know, um, either state or regional level. But anyways, once once you've identified the, the trends data for a keyword, if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see where it shows historical data for the top related keyword phrases that are related related to the seed term over time. But then there's also a rising tab. If you click the rising tab, it's going to show you keywords that have had a significant increase in search interest um, in rec recently. Okay, and uh, and so that that'll actually that's part of the reason it's called trends because it'll show you trending terms that may not have a lot of competition yet. And you can get out ahead of trends. But that's where I always start. Make a list of the key related keyword phrases. Then I'll drill down further into some of the related keyword phrases by just um, entering them into the search field for Google Trends. 
once I've uh, created a nice little list of seed terms, then I'll go and I'll go right over to Power Suggest Pro, and I'll start doing uh, searches there, which is you know keyword suggest. I'll look in the Google Keyword Planner too, but I don't really care much about the Keyword Planner guys anymore for SEO. I do use the Keyword Planner for pay-per-click stuff now, but I don't use it much for SEO, only because those are those aren't SEO metrics that you're looking at. They're PPC metrics. So there's a lot of keywords that don't even register in AdWords that are actually receiving organic search traffic. And so that's where the powers, the suggest scrapers, it doesn't have to be Power Suggest Pro. That's just our my preferred tool for it. But you can use any sort of suggest scraper. There's free ones online too. They're, they're not as robust, but they will do similar things, um, albeit not as much. Um, and then I use the suggest scraper tools to come back with all my long tails. And that's pretty much how I do it. And that's, I mean, that, that's, that's it. That's the extent of keyword research. I say that's all, but a good res keyword research project will take me, uh, you know, sometimes two to four hours to complete. Once I'm done with it, though, I'm done. Like, I can go tackle that niche, and I never have to, well, I don't want to say never, but I won't have to do keyword research for quite some time, unless it's a, like, a, a niche that is very, very young or new, and it um, has, you know, new keywords are entering into that, space it, 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 you know if new keywords are being invented in other words but for most things that are well established once you've done the keyword research one time you're done with it you can I mean you can run with campaigns for months or even years off of that one keyword research list that you've created so mm -hmm. uh, keyword research is the tip of the spear guys so make sure that you're doing it right yeah so Bradley um, can you do the keyword research for me no <laughs> Not unless you pay me lots and lots of money. Right. Um, just to add to what you were saying, Bradley, I like SEM Rush uh, as an extra keyword research tool. My process would be to add a keyword, whatever keyword it is, uh, whether it's a, uh, a long tail or a short tail, into SEM Rush and check the competitors and see what they are ranking for. Yeah. You know, usually that will usually tell you. Um, that's usually done for you keyword research, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. that's true. And and it's funny you mention that because <clears throat> I don't actually go into SEM Rush, but I'm using Blue Chip Backlinks for everything now for a ton of stuff, and um, they they had they integrate through um, SEM Rush with the keyword discovery, where you can essentially take a URL of a website and drop it in, and it will return all of the keyword like the the keywords that the site has pages ranking for. Which is right. a great. That's also great for keyword discovery because if you're if you're unsure if you're going into a new niche, one of the best ways to identify keywords that are driving traffic is to go look at the top three, five, ten, whatever organic sites listed for your main keyword, and drop them into a tool like that, which will identify the keywords that are uh, that those sites are ranking for. And since those are the top ranked sites, they're receiving the most traffic. They're probably being optimized. So you should you know. If, if you identify those pages and keyword phrases that are ranking through a tool like that, then you can target the same keywords and then all, you know make modifications uh, for your campaign as well. Yeah, yeah, that's also true when you find you know a Blatton affiliate website or a Blatton SEO website that's ranked with PBNs or something like that. That's usually the case, you know, when you when you plug that into SEM Rush, it will tell you the keywords that these guys are ranking for, and they are usually optimizing them for. So that's a good stretch. And then lastly for keyword research, if, if you have a web property that you have already up, like this is why I love to use, I use the ATM or, you know, lead gadget, uh, but you can use SERP Shaker for it as well. Um, but if you create a website and just like blanket it out, especially those kind of sites that are like mass page generators and uh, target a handful of keywords around your niche, and build a whole bunch of pages, and then just let the sit the site sit. Now this takes some time because it has to season. The site has to age or season a bit, which um, it takes time. I mean, it, for for the sites I'm working on, they take like six to eight weeks to fully index. But then in uh, so like when I, if I'm if I'm going into a new niche, I'll do my keyword research up front. But I like to build one of those uh, mass page sites uh, very quickly. It's it's simple to set up. They're easy to do. Um, you know, once you know how to do it. And then just let the site sit. And six or eight weeks later, I'll, by the way, just so you know, I'll connect it to Google Search Console. And then uh, six or eight weeks later, once I'm, you know, waist deep into my campaign for whatever project it was, I can go log in the Search Console for that particular site and look at the um, the keyword, the search queries, the, the search data. 
and that that's going to reveal a lot of additional keywords that you may not have even discovered in your keyword research. I found that using those types of sites for research and discovery is um, is almost as powerful as the traffic that they can generate. You know, almost as valuable as the traffic that they can generate. The, that those sites can generate because you end up identifying a bunch of actual real search queries that people are searching for that may not even be showing up or registering in any sort of keyword tool. So use Google's own data is what I'm telling you. That 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 is very beneficial.